This video is about the normal distribution. It describes various characteristics about the distribution and explains how it is often used in the social sciences. Carl Gauss is often credited with the invention of the normal distribution, but others such as Laplace also contributed to its development. In the 1830s, Belgian astronomer Ketelet brought the normal distribution to the social sciences where it was popularized by Francis Galton. Galton's protege, Carl Pearson, is the person who coined the term the normal curve. The normal distribution is often referred to as the Gaussian distribution, or the Laplace Gaussian distribution, or simply the normal curve. The normal distribution is defined by a function with two parameters. The mean mu represents the location of the distribution, and the variance sigma squared represents the spread or the variability of the distribution. We often write a normal distribution as n and within parentheses the mean and the variance. For instance, the standard normal distribution is a normal distribution that has a mean of zero and a variance of one, and we would write it as n zero one. To get an idea of how the parameters affect the distribution, we'll change the parameters and see what happens. First, we'll start with a standard normal distribution where the mean is zero, and then we'll switch to a distribution that has a mean of negative one. You can see that the entire distribution shifted to the left when we change the mean. If we change the mean again, this time to two, the entire distribution shifts to the right. This demonstrates how the mean affects the location, sort of the leftward shift or the rightward shift of the distribution. The variance affects the spread of the distribution. If we start with a standard normal distribution where the variance of, is one, and then we switch to a distribution where the variance is four, you can see how the distribution sort of flattens out. It's still a symmetric bell-shaped curve, but the, the peak of the curve is, is much lower. If we increase the variance again, this time to 16, the curve flattens out even further. These are all normal distributions, but by changing the mean and the variance, we can affect the location and the spread of the distribution. The function that we use to plot the normal curve is referred to as the probability density function. This function gives the density of a value, and in order to use it to compute probability, we have to look at the area between two points for example, if we were interested in the probability that a random variable was between negative two and negative one, we would compute the area between those two points. And you can see it here shaded in blue. The probability that a random variable is between negative one and positive one is shown here. This image shows the probability that a random variable is greater than 1.65. An interesting characteristic of the normal distribution is that regardless of whatever the mean and variance are, we know that about 68% of the observations are between plus or minus one standard deviation from the mean. We also know that about 95% of the values are gonna be within plus or minus two standard deviations of the mean. And finally, we know that about 99% of the values are within plus or minus three standard deviations of the mean. If we look at the total area under the curve, it equals one. Because the probability density function provides values that are all greater than or equal to zero, and the total area under the curve equals one, we know it's a properly defined probability density function. We can compute probability as the area between two points on the probability density function. If we compute the integral of this function from negative infinity to a point x, we get the cumulative distribution function. And that function gives us the probability that a random variable is less than or equal to x. In other words, the normal cumulative distribution function gives us the percentile rank of a particular value. To understand the relationship between the PDF and the CDF, I've plotted them both on this slide. The curve on the left shows the normal probability density function, and the curve on the right shows the normal cumulative distribution function. You'll notice that the PDF is that typical symmetric bell-shaped function that people typically refer to when they talk about a normal distribution. The curve on the right is a normal ogive. It's an S-shaped function. 
if you take a value x and plug it into the normal CDF, what you're getting is an actually an area between two points on the PDF. To see this more clearly, I'm going to show you a, a quick animation. And what you'll see in this animation is the normal ogive, or that normal CDF, and you'll see a black dot move along that curve. You'll also see the normal PDF and a shaded blue region. Well, the value of the black dot on the CDF represents the shaded blue area under the PDF. The normal CDF gives us a percentile rank, but oftentimes we actually want a percentile point. To compute that for a normal distribution, we have to use the inverse distribution function. The IDF gives us the value for which 100 pth percent of the observations are below it. It's a percentile point. A plot of the normal IDF is similar to the CDF, but the axes have been transposed. The normal probability density function is the symmetric bell-shaped function that most people think about when they refer to the normal distribution or the normal curve. We use the PDF to obtain the density of a point. We also use it to compute probability as the area under the curve between two points. The normal CDF or cumulative distribution function is an S-shaped curve. We use the CDF to obtain percentile ranks. We also use it to compute p-values, which we use in hypothesis testing. Finally, the normal IDF, or inverse distribution function, is what we use to compute percentile points. We also use it to compute critical values that we need in computing confidence intervals. We hardly ever compute these functions by hand. Rather, we rely on statistical software, or maybe even the tables in the back of a statistics book, to obtain values for these functions.